Lord is in this place this morning. Can you feel him, church? I'd like to welcome you this morning to Cross Creek Apostolic Church. Here we do life together. Can you turn to your neighbor and say hello? Oh, I'm so glad to be in his house one more time. Thank you, Jesus. This is our Holy Ghost Rally. If you have come here looking for something, you are going to find it. And I am grateful for that. Amen. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. Vacation Bible School is coming up. It is going to be July 20th through the 23rd. The time is 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We want you to get your little one here to the house of God where he is going to completely change their lives. Also, save the date. Sunday, July 25th at 11 a.m. We are having a kids rally. The kids will be in charge of the service. So please come and be blessed for that. You can sign up online. Also, picnic and praise. Amen. The date for that is July 29th, and it's going to be at 7 p.m. That is a Thursday. Please come out and be a part of that. There will be food. There will be fellowship. Amen. And also, last but not least, North American Youth Congress Watch Party. It got shut down, but we are still going to bind together with youth groups from across the U.S. to worship the Lord. This will be on July 30th at 7 p.m. at Abundant Life Church in Baltimore, Maryland. Amen. So please save the dates for that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I was asked to just share a little testimony with you guys, uh, kind of encourage you guys a little bit. Um, Psalms 100 says, um, enter his gates with thanksgiving, um, enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Verse 5 says, for the Lord is good, his mercy everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I just want to say that I thank God for just bringing me here, for allowing me to be with such a great church body. Um, to have a mother that loves the Lord, that prays, to have a wife that loves the Lord and that prays. There's just so much that you have to thank God for that there's no reason that you have to come here and for some reason have to think about, well, what could I praise God for today? The fact that you're here is the reason that you can thank God. The fact that you woke up this morning is a reason that you can thank God. The fact that you drove here, your car works, and that you made it here is the reason that you can thank God. That some of you guys have jobs is a reason that you can just praise and thank God. So if I can encourage anyone here, if you can't think of any reason to praise God, just praise him just for who he is. Amen? Who's ready to worship the Lord?
want to go just a little bit deeper this morning. Come on, if you want the Holy Ghost, would you lift your hands and begin to speak in that heavy, heavenly language? Oh, Jesus, we need your power and presence in this place, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, press a little bit in the spirit, church. Oh, God, we want to see your glory, Jesus. We want to feel your power, God. Break every chain in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, speak to him. The King of Kings is here this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Take me to the place where your peace and your love over. Set free from all shame and guilt, chains are undone. Take me there, take me there. Take me to the place where your peace and your love over. Free from all shame and guilt, chains are undone. Take me there, take me there. Take me to the place where your angels never cease to cry. all of their crowns down at your feet. Take me there. 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 there. Cause I want to know. Cause I
church, just worship Him. The glory of God is in this house this morning. If you've got a need, He's here to meet it. If you need healing in your body, He's here to heal you. If you need a renewing in the Spirit, He's here right now. Just reach out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue worshiping God this morning. Hallelujah. Remember that we have. Hallelujah. Sister Allie's mom this morning needs prayer. She's having emergency surgery. So while you're worshiping, remember Sister Allie's mother to pray for her. Hallelujah. Her name is Janice Porto. 
So continue to pray for her. We have a young man that's been with us. He's is going back home after the summer to go back to school. Brother Michael Hutches, Hutchison, remember in prayer that God would keep him safe. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to remember the Hewitt family this morning, that God would continue to comfort them at the time of loss. Don't stop worshiping God, church. You've got God's attention this morning. But in your worship, you remember these requests and you bring them before God, expecting Him to meet our needs, to reach out and touch those that we love and care for. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, right now, God. Oh, we come before you with worship and praise. We bow down before you, the Almighty God, the Holy One of Israel, the great God and Creator, my Savior and Redeemer. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we have those in need today, God. And we ask you with expectation, God, that you're going to touch them right now where they are. God, for Sister Allie's mom in the hospital, that you would touch her and heal her and raise her up off the bed, God. Oh, God, for Brother and Sister Overton as they travel, God, that you would refresh them in strength and in spirit, God, and put a fresh anointing on their lives. Oh, God, bless them, God, that they can minister to this church congregation. Oh, God, let your anointing fall upon these saints. Bless them with your gifts, God, so that they can minister, God, to their friends, to their neighbors, and to the stranger. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence in this house today, oh God. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but from the very get-go, when we walked in the prayer room this morning, I felt the glory of presence of God in this place. Hallelujah. God wants to do something for you here today. If you would just let him. God can't do anything for you against your will. But if you would just yield to the Spirit this morning, God's got something great for you in this house. Just let Him work in your life. Allow Him to work in your life and do what needs to be done. Oh, hallelujah. And if you're like me, nobody needs to tell you what needs to be done in your life. You know. Oh, people like to say, I don't know where I'm at in the Spirit. But we know exactly where we are in the Spirit. When we forget that we are not perfect and that we need to change every day and that we need to pray and get closer to God. Amen. We need to draw closer to God every day and allow His Word to work in our life, to change us, to make us more like Him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited this morning to hear the Word of God and what God has to say to us. So we're going to press forward and we're going to get some preliminaries out of the way so that we can hear from God. So that if you would, if the ushers would come, I want you to continue to worship God with our praise team and bring your offering unto the Lord with a spirit of worship and praise and continue to allow Him to work in this service and to work in your life because he has got something great for us today. For me, for you, and for everyone sitting in this house this morning, God has something great for you because he loves you with a love like no other. God bless you.
some souls that's been set free there's some strongholds in my life that's been broken some things and some walls have come down and some new walls have gone up because God's built a hedge about me God has destroyed my enemies before me and he's 
conquered my enemies behind me and he took out my enemy on the left and he took out my enemy on the right uh, hallelujah brother ellis was praying for me the other night and he said god has has perfected some gifts in my life he says but there's gonna be some more there's gonna be joy brother ellis tonight i feel joy hallelujah the last few days i've been feeling something more than before there's a happiness there's more than just a happiness i feel joy in the holy ghost i feel joy in my life i feel joy on my job and in my home see this is the work that god does in your life in a service like this when there's been prayer and fasting and a man of god put on his face before god asking for a word from god to his people amen thank you jesus hallelujah are you ready to hear what god has for us today are you ready to hear the word of god and let it transform and change your life to make you more like him brother ellis is so good to have you with us put your hands together unto the lord and give him praise brother ellis come and give us the word of god Hallelujah. Can you give one more hand clap to Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I learned a long time ago, church is a whole lot easier when Jesus shows up. Amen. Contrary to popular belief, you can't have church without him. Jesus said in Revelation, speaking of his own church, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will open, I'll come in and I'll fellowship with him. We can never take the presence of God for granted. Amen. I'll say it again. Church is a whole lot easier when Jesus shows up. Do you agree? Amen. And I just want to tell somebody right now that Jesus is in this building this morning. Mm. Ah, if you need a miracle, it's been said a couple times. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be by me. I don't have magic words to offer you this morning. I don't have a secret formula to give you. Uh, all I know is that wherever Jesus is, healing takes place, deliverance takes place, miracles happen. Uh, and I want to tell you, Jesus is here today. Could you lift both hands up to heaven? Would you just recognize him, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Thank you for visiting with us. You see, I'm a, I'm a ministerial minimalist. What I mean by that is the, the least amount I need to do to pass it over to Jesus, I'm going to do. I learned, from the, I learned from John the Baptist. He said, he must increase. <laughs> but I must decrease. You know, the more we get of him, it seems the less flesh is in the way. It seems like the less personality, the less cheerleading we need because we've got more of him. And when you've got him, it's so easy to worship him. When you know him, it's so natural to lift up his name. Does anybody know him this morning? Does anybody love him this morning? Hallelujah. Sister Allen, I appreciated that song this morning. Amen. You see, it, it might have not been the most trendy or up-to-date song, but there was an old anointing on you when you began to sing that you don't just get overnight. There's some things you get in God that you just don't get overnight. There's some things that have to ferment in your spirit uh, after 30 and 40 years uh, of living this thing uh, and going through hell and high water, uh, but saying, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want to say I'm thankful for elders uh, that have trekked have, have trek the journey before me, uh, that have showed us young people how to do it. Amen. 
Woo, ha, ta, ha. I want to tell you, there are some things excitement can't get you alone. There are some things motivation can't get you alone. You've got to have some commitment, baby. You've got to have some times and some valleys where you go through the valley of the shadow of death, but you realize, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Hallelujah. Woo, Oh, thank you, Lord. I give honor to our elders. Brother Valerie, thank you so much for leading us in the Holy Ghost this morning. Uh, thank you, Brother Vogler. has been here. We said at our leadership meeting for 35 years, it's men like Brother and Sister Vogler and many others uh, that have built churches like this that have long standing preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give honor to Brother Overton. How many of you love your pastor this morning? Amen. I love Brother Overton very much. Very good to me, Sister Overton. There's a saying we have at CLC for those that know him that says, if you're going to spend time with Brother Overton, you're going to eat good. Amen. And I think I've gained like five pounds since I've been here. Amen. I'm going to go home. With, my suits are a little tighter than they were. I'm going to have to enter a season of fasting. Amen. But I love Brother Overton very much. How many are ready to hear the word of the Lord this morning? Amen. You are such wonderful people. In the week that I have spent with you, I have been encouraged by your hunger for God and by your spirit. This is an amazing church. Amen. You are amazing people. You love God. You give it your all. And I'm just so thankful for you this morning. Amen. Praise God. Give honor to the music team for the Brad's doing a wonderful job, isn't he? All the musicians, all the singers. Brother Akeem, he, he led worship on Thursday. He gave it his all. Amen. Sister Allie in the media department. I don't mean to name names. I know I'm going to forget somebody, but um, I, just, I just think this is such a wonderful church. I'm so thankful to have my family with me here today. Amen. Praise God. And um, you're going to help my wife today. If you amen me real loud today, you won't be able to hear the kids screaming throughout the service. Amen. And it'll make her feel a little more comfortable. So is anybody going to preach with the preacher this morning? Amen. Praise God. I believe I've got a word from God today. I believe... That someone's going to, Brother Valerie said it in the Holy Ghost, just at the beginning of service, that someone's going to get a miracle today. Amen. I believe in the Holy Ghost, someone that walked in with a long-term sickness is going to receive healing today. I'm not talking about a diagnosis you got last week. I'm talking about something you've stopped asking God to heal because it's just become a part of the backdrop of your life. Anybody got a sickness like that today? I even, you've stopped asking for healing You've stopped believing for a miracle because it's just been too long. I'm telling you, Jesus is getting ready to do a miracle as a testimony in somebody's life. So right now, I want every hand to be lifted up to heaven. We're going to pray that the gift of faith would move in this building today. In the name of Jesus, uh, God, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. Uh, God, I pray that you would touch them uh, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Uh, God, that you would manifest your presence today. Uh, do the work only you can do that no man can get the glory for. Uh, God, not by me, but by you alone, Lord. Uh, I pray that someone uh, would have the faith uh, to receive something. Uh, God, I pray you would do uh, something supernatural in our midst today. Uh, God, let the heathen know. Uh, Lord, let the the backslider know let the visitor know god that you are in our midst make yourself alive Woo, shataha. hallelujah you know something i learned from the old testament is when there was a battle that was needed to be won and this is why we sing songs in the format that we do when there was a battle to be won they would look and there would be a great battle before them and they would inquire of the Lord, Lord, what do you want us to do? What kind of strategy do you want us to take in conquering this enemy or this foe? And God so often, Brother Valerie, in the Old Testament would say, I want you to send the praisers first. I want you to send the worshipers first. You know what he does? He says, I want you to start digging trenches even before it begins to rain. You see, it's real easy to believe when the miracles are taking place. But that's not how faith in the Bible works. Let me tell you how belief in the world works. Belief in the world says, show me the money and then I'll believe. 
Show me a down payment. Show me some collateral. Show me something physical and I'll believe. But let me tell you how it works in the spiritual. God said, believe first. Believe first and then I will show you. So I just want to ask somebody today, it might just be one, it might just be two, but how would you act if you've got the miracle you've been praying for maybe two, three, four, five, six years, maybe ten years, how would you act? Hey, hallelujah. Sometimes you've got to praise even before the miracle takes place because it's a declaration to God. Lord, I know you're a healer. I know you're a deliverer. I know you're gonna make a way. I know you're not gonna leave me helpless. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of John, chapter 5. Book of John, chapter 5. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody feel God in this house tonight, this morning? Amen. Book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. I'm going to read this story. And there, pardon me, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season, look at your neighbor say a certain season, into the pool and troubled the water, whosoever then went in first after the troubling of the water, stepped in and was made whole of whatever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, listen, 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, wilt thou be made whole the impotent man answered him and i believe this was the core of his dysfunction this phrase right here was the core of his problem he said sir i have no man look at your neighbor and say i have no man all the single ladies say i have no man, have no man. praise god someone received a miracle right now amen <laughs> Someone said it with faith. Amen. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. I want to talk to you just for a few moments about the house of mercy. The house of mercy. One more time, throw both hands up to heaven and say, God, speak a word to me this morning. God, I want to leave here better, more filled with faith, more empowered than I ever have before. Speak to me a personal word today. God, help me to lay hold. Lord, I pray it would fall on the good soil of our hearts. Let it be more than a sermon, but God, let it deposit into somebody's spirit. God, I pray one more time, demonstrate. Show us your power. Show us your glory this morning. And everybody shout amen. 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 You could be seated this morning. Amen. We find in this scene a very unique situation. Miracles and healing in the Old Testament were few and far between. You see, in the Old Testament, to receive a miracle or to receive a healing was much like someone hitting the lottery. You heard about it happening to other people. You heard about other people getting a miracle. You read on the news about somebody getting a breakthrough, but it just never seems to happen to you. And this was the case in the Old Testament. Besides the miracles of Moses and Joshua, and besides the miracles of Elijah and Elisha, there were sparse testimonies of miracles in the Old Testament. Therefore, if you had an ailment, 
in the Old Testament. And the technology of the day was not suited to treat your ailment. You were doomed to a life of suffering. And we find this unique place, a one-of-a-kind place, called Bethesda, having five porches. It was outside of the sheep gate. This was the place that they brought the sacrifices in for the festivals, whether it be Passover or whether it be Pentecost or the Feast of Tabernacles. This was the place where the sheep would come into the city and they would most likely drink there. And so this place became a holy place. Bethesda literally means house of mercy. It was a place in the Old Testament. Though miracles were not common, though they were not happening on a regular basis, uh, though it was not part of their daily culture, there was still a glimmer of hope. There was this unique place, and it became a hub for impotent folk or sick people, people that were paralyzed or maimed or blind. They couldn't see, they couldn't hear, or they had some type of deadly disease. They would all congregate around this place and it was very unique that at one time it says at a certain season it didn't happen randomly they knew about the time the miracle would take place they really couldn't pinpoint it so they all they all sat with earnest expectation you've got to visualize this in your mind they sat up they might have been paralyzed or they might have been lame but when the season came upon them when they started to recognize hold up the season of the miraculous is upon us i'm not just going to sit here idly by I'm not just going to sit here and, and if I'm not ready, someone else is going to get in that water before I do. So they were in a posture or a position. They came expecting a miracle. Because the more expected they were, the more ready they were, the greater chance they had of receiving a miracle. And so an angel would come down and would stir the water. And whoever got in that water first, though it only be one person at a certain season, it would still be a manifestation of the divine healing power of God. And I don't care how dark a situation get, God always leaves a glimmer of hope. Can anybody testify that even in the darkest season of your life, uh, even when it seemed uh, like all hope was gone, uh, there was still uh, just a little light, uh, just a little beam uh, that came into your life? You ever been in a, I, I like my rooms when I go to sleep, uh, real dark. I, I, I don't know anybody like to sleep in a dark room. And I'll, I'll actually go in and I'll proof the room, you know. I go into a hotel and I'll get towels and I'll put them by the door. And I'll, I'll, I'll get, you know, uh, towels, I'll put them over the alarm clock. And I'll try to get that room as dark as possible. And then you get to the place where you can't even see your hand in front of your face. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then you lay down in bed and there's one light left over. It's the light on the smoke alarm. And there ain't no way I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover that thing up. And when everything is bright, and when everything is normal, I don't notice that smoke alarm. But the moment it gets real dark, that little smoke alarm will brighten up the whole room. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And that's how it, that's how it is in our life sometimes. The darker it gets, you'll come to church and someone will just get up and say, you know what? The Lord is good. And that one little word, that one little encouragement seems to be a light in your life. I don't care how dark it gets in your life. I don't care how hopeless you might seem or how how it might feel. God always leaves hope in our lives. Can anybody stand up and say praise the Lord? Amen. Praise God. Y'all going to help me preach this morning. Amen. All right. We're going somewhere. I promise. And so it says a great number of people. This is a common phrase in the Old Testament or excuse me in the Bible to talk about a number that was that did not have a number it was so many people that it wouldn't even be possible for them to one two three four five six and think about it on the day of Pentecost I mean there there was thousands of people they got the Holy Ghost and they were able to number them so what whatever was going on it was an innumerable amount of people and then all of a sudden Jesus walks into the place and he walks and he sees the people earnestly expecting to receive their miracle 
And then he comes across one dude that's just lying there. I need some help. Bro, bro, the Valerie boys, can you guys come up here? All right, these are my illustrations today. All right, I want you to, I want you to lay down right here, okay? Go ahead and lay down right here. All right, I want you to come down. I want you to get on your knees. And I want you to just look like you're ready to run a race, all right? And so Jesus walks by, and he sees one ready to run, and he sees another one getting ready to go, and he sees another one earnestly expecting, and he looks at one, and he's ready to go, and then he looks at another one, and he's just, he's just laying there dead. And Jesus, I guarantee you, Jesus rolls up to the house of mercy. He rolls up to the place in the Old Testament where miracles happen, and he sees a dude that lives there. Jesus said he knew he'd been there in the spirit. He discerned it in the spirit. He knew that man been there 38 years. He said, why, why is this dude showing up to the place where miracles happen, to where signs and wonders take place, and he's not even expecting a miracle? And how often is that true of our churches today? We believe and we preach miracles. We believe. Lay down. You ain't healed yet. You're going to get healed soon. Don't worry. You'll get healed soon, all right? We go to the place where miracles take place, but we walk in not expecting anything to happen. And how, how combobulated must the Lord get when he said, I've given you my spirit. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Anybody, anybody believe that this morning? It says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus said, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing, nothing nothing shall by any mean harm you and when you get it down in your spirit when i show up to places where jesus is it don't matter if it's been one two ten or twenty years if jesus is there this could be the service where i receive my miracle and it was the response of the man jesus comes to him he's like yo that's what he said right jesus from stockton i believe it right he said, yo, don't you, look at all these folk, they're all ready to go. What's wrong with you? Why don't you want to be healed? And he answered a very curious thing. He says, Lord, I have no man to put me down into the water. You see, one thing I've learned about human beings is if they find something that's good in life, they will find a way to take advantage of the system. That's why people be camping out late at night. That's why people, they, 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 they'll figure something out. I mean, they'll do anything. They'll spend $1,000 to get something for free. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to figure out a way to cheat the system. And the guy said, yo, the system is rigged against me. Brother Keel, I want you to come up here real quick. So he said, Lord, it's not that I don't desire to be healed. It's not that I don't want to be healed. Go stand by that boy right there. He said, it's not that I don't want to be healed. He said, it's all a political game. It's not about who wants it most. It's about who's got the fastest friend. Sister Liz, I want you to stand up for me. Sister Liz is going to be our angel right now. Hey, no laughing. Amen. All right. Sister Liz is going to be our angel right now. I want you to pick this boy up right here. Not me. He ain't going to pick me up. All right, stand up. There you go. I picked you because you're, you're strong, okay? Get his other leg. I don't want him falling on me. All right. Now I want you to get in a position like you're paralyzed. And when the moment Alyssa stirs up the water, I want you to try to go as fast as you can. Akil, you're going to go as fast as you can, all right? This is what happened. I'm trying to give you an illustration of what this dude had to go through on an everyday basis. This is what his struggle was. All right, Alyssa, stir the water. All right, she's stirring the oatmeal pot. All right, go, Akil. Akil, I want you to win, bro. Come on. Don't ruin my illustration, bro. All right. Thank you. Let's give it up for him. So this is what happened on a regular basis. He said, every time I try to do something, uh, there's someone who's got a faster friend than me. And sometimes you can feel like the system is rigged against you. Anybody ever felt like you were in a hopeless situation before and all odds were with you against you? And you said, man, if I just had a better friend, I wouldn't be in this situation. If my parents just raised me a little bit better, I wouldn't be so messed up in my mind. 
Am I hitting too close to home right now? If my husband didn't leave me, if my wife didn't leave me, I'd have the victory in my life. If I just had a better job, Lord, we can't get the victory because we don't got to, we don't make $15 an hour, not 13. We can't get the victory because the housing market's too expensive in Maryland. We can't get the victory because all the odds are stacked up against us. Young preachers, if I could just meet the right man, if my pastor would just mentor me a little bit more, if he would just give me a position, if he would just exalt me in front of the church, then I'll be used by God. There's a saying in the world, it's not what you know, it's, oh, y'all know it, huh? Y'all dog eat dog around here, I know it. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And so what we do is we try to network our way into a move of God. We try to rub elbows with the right preacher. We try to rub elbows with the right pastor. If we can just get the right tapes, the right CDs, we'll, we'll somehow break into our ministry. If I could just get better medical insurance, my life is going to get better. Let me tell you, honey, the devil wants you to throw every excuse out in the book. And the moment that excuse goes away, he'll come in with another one. Let me tell you, a better job's not going to make you happy. More money's not going to make you happy. If your parents raised you better, I understand all things could be better, but you're living in a situation right now, and you can't go back and change the past. So what are you going to do right here, right now? I say right now, Jesus is in the place. And I don't know why people don't worship. I don't know. I don't understand. If you're new, I get it. But if you've been in church for a long time, I don't get how you could be in church 20, 25 years. And while Jesus walks and moves around, I don't know what happened in your life. But let me tell you, you might be sick for 38 years. You might be sick for 40, 45 years. But as long as Jesus is in the building, there is still hope. Can anybody stand to their feet right now and testify that God is a faithful God? Sister Allen, he's faithful. Hallelujah. We got no choir song. We sing at CLC. I don't know if y'all singing around here. It goes, hallelujah. You know that one? Anyhow. Hallelujah. Anyhow. I'll be singing. Hallelujah. Anyhow, right? Paul and Silas locked up in prison. Hallelujah. Anyhow, chains was still on their chains was still on their arms. Hallelujah. Anyhow, no deliverance take place yet. Hallelujah. Anyhow, and then Silas busts out with the subtle. I believe I can testify. God's been good to me through every test and trial. I got the victory. And then he sang that part, nobody knows the words. Da 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 My God's never failed me yet, so I gotta stand my ground. No matter what comes my way, I'll lift my voice and say, Hallelujah! 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 It doesn't matter how bad your life gets. Listen to me, family. You don't have to wait for the chains to fall off. Before you get a breakthrough. You don't have to wait until you're fully delivered before you can lose your mind praising God. The devil wants to constrict your mind to think that your excuses or your lack of a friend is bigger than your God. Don't let the lack of what you have get in the way of what Jesus has. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if you want it, if you expect it, there's a lot. Of, there's a big difference in getting around Jesus with no faith and getting around Jesus full of faith. It said in Nazareth, he could not do many mighty works because of their unbelief. Jesus didn't have a magic formula. He says, I can do it. If you believe it, I'll do it. Go ahead, be seated. There was a young man. There was a young man in Bible college. I knew him. He came freshman year, 
and we had a healing service and the preacher said whoever's got the gift of healing I want you to come up and I was just a kid I was like okay cool I'll try this out you know <laughs> this sounds cool healing seeing people healed you know Amen. and so I got up there and I believed it and this young man comes up and he had these coke bottle glasses man he couldn't see nothing looked like he had x-ray vision I sw- you know what I mean like he straight up had these thick glasses and the preacher went up to him and said young man do you believe you could be healed and his answer was this he says I know God can do it I just don't know if he'll do it for me and he said, these people, had two people, it was me and a, another lady, he said, they're going to pray hands, pray, lay hands on you, one on the right eye, one on the left eye, and God is going to heal you. And we prayed for him. You know what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. And listen, story ain't over. One year later, this young man, something happened in his life. He got a hold of God from that time. He was praying. He was fasting. He was running the aisles. He was coming to church with expectancy. And a year later, just a year later, this kid became on fire for God. And God, one year later, Sister Alyssa, brought it back into my spirit. And I walked to him. His name was Danny. I walked up. I said, Danny, do you remember the prophecy was given you about a year ago? He said, I remember it. Do you still believe God can heal you? He looked at me and said, without a shadow of a doubt. That lady, I wanted to follow that original plan. I called that lady. I had her, I had her number just by chance. She already left the church. So I said, I'm going to put the telephone on the left side of his face. You're going to play for the left eye. I'm going to lay hands on the right eye, and God's going to do a miracle. We laid hands just like we did a year ago. Nothing was different in our faith. Nothing was different in what we believed. But everything was different in his faith. We laid hands. I'm telling you, he couldn't see from me to Brother Valerie if there were words right there. He couldn't see that far. And we prayed for him. And after we prayed for him, he took his, his glasses were off. He started to blink like, you know, how you put uh, drops in your eyes. He started blinking. And he looked around. And he started noticing things in the church he had never noticed before. We had a sign on the back wall. It says, saved by preaching on it. He said, how long has that sign been there? I've never seen that sign before. I got my little King James Bible out with little print. And Sister Janelle, I I was about this far out. And he read every word on that page. Listen. He couldn't drive without his glasses. And then we started to praise and worship God. We ran around the sanctuary. And at the top of his lungs, he yelled, Jesus, healed my eyes. Everybody to hear, Jesus, healed my eyes. And then I asked him, I said, Danny, where are your glasses at? He said, I don't know. Half of them are over there. The other half are over there. I don't need them anymore because Jesus healed my eyes. Listen, what was the difference in the story? The difference wasn't the people praying. The difference wasn't the preacher. The difference wasn't the environment. The difference wasn't where he got prayed for. The difference was his faith. We've got to get out of this mentality like the man at the pool. Jesus is coming on in, and we just lay there. I tried this before. Some pastor's going to just see someone else. Say, they don't even pray for me anymore. They stop believing for me. But do you believe for you? I don't care if nobody else believes for you. Do you still believe for you? Listen. Jesus, I'm going to tell you something about Jesus that I've learned about him. Why, of all these people, why was this the man that he called out? Jesus takes an interest in hopeless situations. Listen, if you've got a hopeless situation, you've got a great chance for God to heal you. Listen, the darker the situation, the better the chance for you to get healed. Why? Because God doesn't want man getting the glory for his miracle. Sometimes Jesus lets a situation get so bad that we can't stand up and say a doctor is going to get the credit for this. Sometimes Jesus lets it get so bad that we're going to have to stand up and say, if it hadn't been for the Lord that had been on my side, I surely would have perished. I surely would have fallen. But thank God that he came into my life and he delivered me. I had a friend. She had one baby. Then there was complications with the second, and she could not have another child, and she agonized over it. If any, any ladies in here have ever struggled with a barren womb, I hear it's just one of the most agonizing. I, 
I obviously never experienced myself, but it could be one of the most agonizing things that a human could feel. And she felt that pain. And the doctor told her, you're never going to have another baby again. And she agonized over it. And the situation was dark. And the medical team could do nothing about it to deliver her. And she came up to me and told me all this. And a couple services later, I felt I was walking in the altar just like I do. And I felt, Brother Valerie, I felt the unction of the Holy Ghost on me. And I laid hands on her and her husband next to her. And I said, I, I'm just going to pray for you. I said, I'm going to pray for your womb right now. And she began to weep and she began to cry. And she just said, thank you. Because there was just a glimmer of hope. Uh, that even though the doctor said, there's nothing. Even though the doctor says, we can't help you anymore. She knew there was still hope. Uh, she knew there was still a chance because Jesus was there. And I laid hands on her. And anybody ever pray for somebody? And the Lord straight just vomits things out your mouth? Not real vomit, but words? Because that would be nasty, right? Don't, th don't be throwing up on people in the church, all right? But it just came out of my mouth, Sister Alyssa. It came out of my mouth. I said, by this time next year, you'll be holding a baby boy in your arms. I wanted to run and hide. I wanted to run, and I wanted to hide. And I, I prayed. I was nervous. And she came back. I forgot about it. Ten services later, ten weeks exactly, she came back. And she looked at me, and she said, thank you. I said, thank you for what? She had tears in her eyes, and she said, I am 10 weeks pregnant today. Listen, sometimes God lets it get dark. Sometimes God lets the situation seem hopeless just so he can come on in and do a miracle and get glory out of your life. Woo! Shut and I just want to preach to somebody this morning. If you believe, God will do it. If you've got faith, God will do it. Lift your hands and begin to worship him right now. Come on, someone lift your voice right now. Come on, let that spirit of faith get on you right now. Come on. Last time I, pre I preached on this topic, there was a lady in the altar. She had intestinal issues. And she was the lady that had to go to the parties with special food. She just gave up. She had special meals. When there was potluck and picnic and praise, she couldn't eat what everybody else was eating. And I didn't know what her situation was. But I laid hands on her. God gave me a word of knowledge. I said, you have intestinal issues. God's healing you right now. She fell out. She was just standing there like... All right, I'm going to go to the altar. I'm just going to go through the motions. Preacher told us to go up. She stood there like this. I said, in the Holy Ghost, I said, you've got intestinal issues. I knew nothing about this lady. She wasn't even a, like sometimes people be praying and, you know, you pray for them because they already getting a breakthrough. It looks like you helped them get that. You know what I mean? Am I calling too much realness out today? But this lady was just standing there. You know what I mean? I, I'm human too, all right? And this lady was just standing there. And I said, you got intestinal issues. God's healing you right now. She fell out in the spirit. The pastor called me a week later, said she went for a checkup. Doctor said, are you sure that th there's actually something wrong in you? Because your intestines look better than normal. Anybody believe it this morning? Sometimes when you've just given up, uh, Jesus still comes. He still comes in on and he does a miracle in your life. Listen to me. I could tell you stories all day long about how situations get dark. You say, preacher, I don't got a, I don't got a physical ailment. It's something in my body. It's my marriage. My marriage is beyond repair. That my lost loved ones are gone. I had another situation very similar to the first one. A lady, her husband walked away from God and walked away from her. And she felt that she still needed to be married to him. So she wouldn't divorce him and get alimony from him. So she had to live in her car believing that God would restore her marriage. He's living large. He's got a decent job. He hates everything about her, but she won't divorce him because God gave her a promise. So she lives in her truck. And one day she comes up to me. She says, Morgan, I'm just about, I'm just about giving up. It's been three years. She says, I'm just about giving up. And I, she said, will you pray for me? I prayed for her just like the other situation. I prayed for her. And there come that Holy Ghost word vomit. And I said, very similar. 
I said, by this time next year, you and your husband will be reconciled together. And she, ah, you know, she just received it. And then she came up to me one day. She says, she, she looked at me. She said, Brother Morgan, that's the only thing that keeps me going, that word. And she said this. She said, I know you ain't no prophet liar. She said, I know God's. And I was, oh, my word. I felt sick to my stomach, man. Only thing keeping this late. I prayed every day, God, let it come to pass, Lord. I prayed. I fasted over it. You know, I was young. I was, I was very young in my ministry back then. And let me tell you what. It was Thanksgiving the next year. She looked at me and she said, I've only got a few months left of the year. She took the prophecy real serious. She said, but I just know God's going to do it. She said, it seems worse. It's Thanksgiving. She said, it seems worse. But I know God's going to do it. I know it's been almost four years. But I know that God's going to do it. Family, December 25th. Don't you love Christmas? December 25th that year, her, her husband knocked on the door. And he asked her, can I come on in? And they spent Christmas together, and they renewed their vows, and they're in church five, six years later, and they're winning souls, and they're teaching Bible studies, and God restored everything that he said he would restore. I don't care how dark it looks. As long as you've got an opportunity to get in the presence of Jesus. And I used to hear her, her name was Sister Leah. I heard Sister Leia in the prayer room during that year. I would be tucked under the pews praying, and she'd be walking the floors, and she'd say, Devil, get your hands off my man. She said, Devil, I've got a word from God. Get your hands off of my man. Listen, there's another old song. It says, Whose report will you believe? Listen, when you got to believe the report of the Lord, that means sometimes there's conflicting reports. The report of the Lord doesn't often or hardly any time line up with the report of the natural. Listen, God thrives in hopeless situations. That is why he chose Israel. He said, I didn't choose you because you were mighty. I choose you because you were small. I didn't choose you because you were strong. I chose you because you are weak. So you might say, preacher, I've come into the house of God. I've got too many problems. I've got too many situations. I've got too many issues. How could God ever do anything for me? Friend, you are a perfect candidate for a miracle. But you've got to get to the place where you start to believe it. One more thing, and then we're going we're gonna to let the Lord do his thing. Amen. Amen. Anybody re ready to receive a miracle this morning? Yeah. If you really believe it, I want you to lift both hands to heaven right now. Yeah. Musicians, you can come. Now hear me. There was something very unique about this man's situation. After the fact, if you go and read the rest of the story, Jesus goes to this man that God is healing and he says, go thy way and sin no more, lest a greater thing fall on you. This man was not there. Because sometimes it's easy to believe for a miracle when we had no fault in the sickness. It's easy to believe for God to restore our marriage when we were not at fault in the pro at causing the problem. It's easy to believe that. But when we have been involved... Maybe you were on drugs before and you say, preacher, I deserve to be in this place. I deserve to have my mind blown. I, I, I used to run around. I used to sleep around. I deserve to be in this place. Listen, there's a story in the Old Testament. Joshua chapter 7. If you want Sister Allie, verse 24. But I'm going to tell the story real quick. It's the story of a man named Achan. Brother King, whenever you're ready, bro. There's a story of a man named Achan. And Achan, he made a big mistake. The children of Israel, they went, to a bad, they went to the battle of Jericho. It was a great battle. They shouted. The walls came down. God gave a great victory. Then there was a battle of Ai. The Bible says they were a small people. But because of Achan's sin, you see, God said, 
I don't want you going into Jericho and I don't want you stealing any idols. I don't want you stealing anything from out of the city. But Achan, out of his selfishness, he stole it anyways. And he hid it under his camp. And many Israelites lost their lives because of his sin. And listen to the Old Testament way of handling this. Sister Ali, verse 24. It says, And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan. 24, please. I got it right here. It's all right. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold, and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his donkeys and his sheep and his tents, and all that he had, and they brought him into the valley of Accor. Look at your neighbor. said the valley of Accor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. And after they had stoned them with stones, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Accor unto this day. Valley of Accor literally means the valley of my trouble. And so you have to understand that the Israelites had to walk past this monument. And every time their children said, Mom, Dad, what is that great heap of stones there? That's, that's a bad memory, son. We don't talk about that. Shut up. That's a place in my life that I don't even revisit. I'm not talking about the problems that everyone knows about you. I'm talking about the problems even your husband and your wife doesn't know. I'm talking about the things you struggle with. I'm, I'm preaching to somebody right now. I'm talking about the things you struggle with as a young boy or a young girl. I'm talking about the, the, the rattling of the door handle at night. I'm talking about abuse verbally, physically, sexually. I'm talking about those who've been bullied. You were bullied at school. People said it wasn't that big a deal, but it wrecked you on the inside. I'm talking about that place. You, I'm not just talking to teenagers. I'm talking to people 50, 60 years old. I, I remember talking to a lady one time. She's in her 60s. Uh, and she looked at me and told me about a girl that bullied her in elementary school. Huh? And she talked about it like it was yesterday. It was a deep pain in her life. The valley of my trouble. That's the place I don't go in my life. That's the place I don't remember. That's the place I don't even talk to God about. But look what happens. When Jesus comes and you give him all of your life, Sister Ali, Isaiah 65, 10. Hallelujah. It says, and Sharon shall be a fold of the flocks and the valley of Accor, a place for the herds to lie down in. For my people that have sought me. He said, before I came, before Jesus showed up, the valley of Accor was a bad memory in your life. It was a place that no one was allowed to go. But when you give it to Jesus, he'll transform it. And he'll make it a place of peace for other people to find refuge in. Listen, a te listen. if you can't talk about it, a testimony is only a testimony if you could talk about it. If you can't talk about it, it's not a testimony. You might have learned how to cope with it. You might have learned how to deal with it, but God's not wanting you just to deal with it. God wants to deliver you from it. Hosea. Hosea 2.15. Next verse. It says, and I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Accor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there. As in the days of her youth, she's going to sing and she's going to have joy like the day before that thing happened. Woo! When Jesus comes to get ready to heal you and deliver you, he's not going to do it part of the way. He's not going to do it halfway. It's going to become a place of hope, not just for you, but all the people around you. We have a lady at our church. She is a statistical anomaly. She shouldn't be here. She shouldn't be alive. She was raped as a young girl by her own father. She was molested by her grandfather. She was addicted to alcohol by the time she was 10. She was addicted to weed by the time she was 12. And so on, 15 crack, 18 heroin. 
She was a druggie. She slept around, did everything she could to get her next fix. One night with her boyfriend, they got in some kind of drunken or, or high or something. They got in some kind of fit, and he chased her down to kill her. And she was bloody, and he threw her in the back of a car. But by the grace of God, she got out of that situation. She got out of it alive. She said it was a hard path moving forward. She said she had a lot of false starts. She had a lot of opportunities to get right, but she never did. She couldn't get delivered all at once. But let me tell you right now, that lady is at our church. She runs our addiction recovery center. And hundreds of people. We are now state approved to take people in that have DUIs and drug offenses and they could come into our apostolic church and get a state approved recovery program and they're talking about apostolic they're talking about Jesus name baptism they're talking about deliverance all started with a little girl that was molested by her daddy changing the lives of hundreds of people I don't care how dark it is you open it up to Jesus. Huh? I'm talking about physical healings today. You're going to get a physical healing, but you're going to, there's some people. You're like that man at the pool. You ain't got nothing in your body, but you stopped asking Jesus to take the nightmares away. Whew. There's places in your mind right now, if you would instantly go there, your body would physically cringe. Let me tell you, no child of God should ever have to live with that type of torment. Amen. Old Testament, that's the valley of Accor. Mama, what's that heap of rocks right there? Mama, what's that tattoo on your arm? Mama, where are those people always coming around? Why, what's grandpa talking about? Who the, what's that old life? Son, we don't talk about that. That's my trouble. I don't talk about the days of my trouble. But Jesus... When he comes in, he'll turn the valley of Accor, the place you didn't want to talk about. Let me tell you about my testimony. Let me tell you about the time that I was molested, but Jesus came in and delivered me. You don't got to give everyone the, the gory details. You don't got to give everyone all the, you don't got to do all that. You just say, let me tell you about a broken vessel. Huh? Let me tell you about a vessel that couldn't hold water. Huh? Let me tell you about somebody. Huh? Come on, I feel my help coming on right now. Huh? Let me tell you about a life uh, that was broken. Uh, I, was, I was drugged out my mind, uh, addicted to pornography. Uh, I was addicted to all kinds of mess. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, I opened that place up to Jesus uh, and it became easy to worship. Listen, condemnation are, the, condemnation are the chains that you put on yourself. The chains of sin are not even as heavy as the chains of condemnation. Because in the midst of the chains of sin, you can feel Jesus moving on you. And you'll throw those chains off. But the chains of condemnation are the ones you put back on. Nope. I'm not good enough for Jesus. A lot of you don't worship not because you don't think God is good. You just don't think you're good enough to worship him. You think whatever you committed in your past, whatever things you allowed into your life, I don't care if it was this morning. You know, the Bible says Jesus, this is what I love about Jesus. It says that he understandeth my thoughts afar off. You see, I might think of something wicked in my mind, but Jesus sees the spider web where that thought came from. It might have been in my childhood. It might have been 20, 30 years ago. It might have been in a situation that I blacked out of my mind. He understandeth my thoughts afar off. You see, God doesn't judge us in the way we think he judges us. It says, I, I love, if you need a reason to praise God, for the bread, bread, Psalm 100, I love Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Everything that's in me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Why? And forget not all of his benefits. What are his benefits? Who healeth all thy diseases and forgiveth all thine iniquities. It goes on to say, who hath redeemed us from the grave and hath crowned us with loving kindness and with tender mercy. Who filleth thy mouth with good things 
it says as high as the heavens are above the earth so is his mercy to them that fear him listen to me now oh if you need oh shut up if you need a reason to dance i'm gonna give you a reason to dance right now if you need a reason to shout i'm gonna give you a reason to shout right now listen he hath not dealt with us according to our iniquity nor judged us according to our sin he remembers our frame that we are but dust as far as the east is from the west so far as he removed our transgressions from us if you need a reason to shout you don't need to you might not need to shout i'm good god thank you for making me good thank you for making me the big boss applesauce thank you for making me the big cheese you don't have to pray any of that you can say god despite my insecurity despite my failures if i ever need a reason to praise god i say this he hath not dealt with us according to our iniquity i deserved a lot worse i deserved a lot worse i deserved a lot worse if he ever punished me it says in hebrews he who the lord loveth he chastiseth if the lord didn't love you he wouldn't chastise you if you ever got corrected by god it's because he loves you he has not dealt with us according to our iniquities or because our sins and so we walk into this place the house of mercy and Jesus gave us a powerful symbol that day. He said, it's not just one person that waits for the troubling of the water. Who oh, shut up. It's not just one person that has the strongest and the fastest friend. It's anyone, no matter how hopeless, no matter how long you've been there, no matter if you deserve to be there or not, if you can just touch me, if you can just get a hold of me woman with the issue of blood I preached about it on Thursday but she had this issue it drove her from her family it drove her from her friends it was she was ceremonially unclean she couldn't go into the house of God and the Bible says for 12 years she had this issue and she spent all that she had on doctors and that if that wasn't bad enough you got broke trying you know those YouTube ads try this vitamin and you're gonna feel better she was that lady clicking on all the ads Every, every remedy, she tried it. But you know what it says? It just got worse. And so many of you have tried to drown out your pain with your job, with entertainment, with relationships. You tried to look for deliverance in a person. I want to speak to a young man or a young lady right now. You think that your completion's going to come once you get married. Honey, it's not going to come once you get married. It's going to come in Jesus and Jesus alone. And when you get married, you get married as a whole person, not as a half person. Because that other person is never going to be able to complete what is lacking in your heart. So stop trying to fill a God-shaped hole with a human-sized solution. It just gets worse. Just get the boldness. Lord, I've come to church 38 years. Lord, I've been struggling with this my whole life. I'm not just going to lay here no more. My, my fist is clenched tight up to this point. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release it to you right now. I'm telling you, the gift of healing is sweeping over this congregation right now. Physical, emotional, spiritual wounds are being healed in the house right now.
I want everybody in the building, I want you to lift your hands up to God right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, these altars are open right now. If you need a miracle, Jesus is moving right now. If you need a miracle, Jesus is moving right now. Come on, don't wait. Don't wait.
Come on, I need two or three more brothers. Run down here. Come help me pray for the brother right now. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes. Come on. It might not be a lot, but he's dancing. Yes. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, sister told me brother couldn't stand at all. He just stood and took two steps in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hey, and for a minute there, he got a little dance in him. Hallelujah. Hey, we're believing God to do a full miracle. But hey, I'm happy with a little bit of progress. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. You need a miracle. I want you to come stand up right here. You need a miracle. I want you to come stand up. In the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God, Lord, let all crooked places be made straight right now. God, I pray deliverance in Jesus' name. I pray full restoration. Let there be a breakthrough today, not tomorrow. Let there be a break forth in your spirit even right now to feel the anointing and the power of God working in an impossible situation. It's not for my sake. It's for God's sake.
come on. You need a miracle. You need a miracle. I want you to come down. We're going to pray for you. It's not me. It's Jesus. But we're just going to impart faith into you. What do you need, girl? All right, she's got a skin condition. We're going to believe God's going to heal her right now. Lift your hands. Look up to heaven because it's coming from Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke this eczema right now. We command it to be gone, to be dried up in Jesus' name. Lord, let it happen even right now as a miracle of the power of God. We speak to this eczema and we command you, be gone in Jesus' name. I feel to tell somebody else right now Jesus said it wilt thou be made whole wilt thou be made whole do you want it do you want it Come on. Who needs a miracle? Who needs a miracle? 